This was a really big week in gaming with pretty substantial new Assassin's Creed Red leaks, info about the future of Warner Bros games, that doesn't sound that great, and the future of PlayStation. But of course the headliner was Grand Theft Auto 6, or should I say the next Grand Theft Auto as Rockstar or Take 2 never said that it was called GTA 6, which I find interesting. So maybe they're gonna ditch the number, either way you've likely seen the tweet by Sam Hauser, one of the co-founders of Rockstar, we are very excited excited to let you know that in early December we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with all of you. So yes, in early December, less than a month from now, we are probably getting a similar reveal trailer as we saw for GTA 5. I forgot it was only 1 minute and 24 seconds, but it did show a lot of the city, we heard Michael narrate it and already saw a heist, like it will be awesome to see just how good this game will probably look. I'm sure we'll meet the two main characters, but yeah, overall I'm expecting kind of the same top level stuff, mostly focused on the life in the upgraded Vice City. And then by the way, it took a full year before we saw a second GTA 5 trailer because the game got delayed, but at least at this moment, GTA 6 still seems planned for a launch before April 2025, because Take 2 still expects almost 8 billion dollars in revenue, which a 2.5 5 billion dollar jump from this financial year and only really GTA can make that happen. Although as always with Rockstar games they usually get delayed by a year so even if it's planned for the end of 2024 or early 2025 it's probably going to be later than that. And real quick one more thing about the name so during the investor call and on Twitter they only said the next Grand Theft Auto but we also have Ben who worked at Rockstar he put the game on his LinkedIn profile and he did say GTA 6 so that at least seems to be the internal name. I still think they will probably go for that. We also learned that the potential sec after strike will not have an impact on the game at all. So it should not be delayed because of that. And now the question mostly is when do we get the trailer? Like it's easy to point to the game awards on December 7th. As that's of course the place where a ton of reveals will happen. And for any other game I would have said yes that makes a lot of sense. But this Rockstar they can drop this trailer on Christmas day and everyone will watch it. So I don't think they need to Jeff his show. And it would actually hurt the Game Awards because then everyone would be talking about that trailer. So I think they will pick their own day, maybe just before the Game Awards, but we will see. And I'm curious to, of course, hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And there is way more gaming news to go over, including those as Creed Leaks. Of course, if you like these roundup videos, then leaving a like would be appreciated. And subscribe, because I post one of these videos every Sunday. But first, the sponsor of this video, Omni Heroes, a free heroic fantasy casual strategy RPG with 4.8 stars on the App Store and 4.6 stars on the Google Play Store after almost 50,000 reviews. You can collect over 100 characters from Valkyries to Demons, and there are a ton of team compositions possible and you need to try them out to complete all the free content. The game is perfect for relaxed gameplay sessions and there is the ability to quickly do battles as well so you can faster get the rewards and they constantly add new content like the Ashen Phantom season that is out on November 17th and adds a new storyline and a roguelike deck building mode. So totally download Omni Heroes right now via my special link in the video description to claim 777 free pools so you can already get five legendary heroes onto your roster within the first week and thanks to the deep synergy systems there are really a ton of possibilities for a cool team so download the game again that would really support the channel link in the video description and now let's get back into it a game that is further away than gta 6 is the new moss effect we got a very short teaser trailer for the new game for n7 day a cool character kind of looks like a warlock from destiny in a nice outfit walking down a hall and then bam the logo this really is like wild was announced at the game awards in 2020 the game is still super far away with jeff grubb on his podcast saying that we should not expect it until 2029 and that's actually not surprising because in june we heard from bioware that the game is only still in pre-production so every n7 day for the foreseeable future will likely just be a small teaser like this i wanted to set your expectations right they're first planning dragon age dreadwolf that is starting 
targeting summer 2024 so we might actually see it at the game awards because the game showed up there many times before i will keep you posted here and yes like i said we have some big assassin's creed red leaks i did not expect this much information right now because the game is planned for the end of next year but it's all coming from french youtuber jonathan who has been right many times before so assassin's creed red is of course the japanese rpg type game 100 plus hours and well jonathan now notes that the map is going to be larger than Valhalla, but not as big as Odyssey. DG VFX put Valhalla at 120 square kilometers, while Odyssey was 256. But we of course had a ton of water, so 130 square kilometers makes more sense for just the ground stuff. I also don't expect there to be naval in red, but yeah, in short, the map is going to be huge. And with Valhalla, they already kind of moved away from the icons that would clutter the map. Instead, we saw colored dots that would indicate activities in the world, and they're even moving more in this direction direction with red with Jonathan comparing it more to Elden Ring and also how the exploration mode where you get hints as to where you need to go instead of just a marker that you have to go to being the default option in red. He was also not sure if their guided mode so that you have a marker that you can just follow will be in red at all. In terms of gameplay we should expect a grappling hook. Jonathan mentions that it won't be like Sekiro where you will just sip to a roof. No we still have to climb and my take is that it might mean that we won't have the freeform climbing that we saw in Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla but instead it will be like the older titles or like what Mirage had as well so that we cannot climb some walls but then with the grappling hook we can like pull ourselves upwards that's at least my take on it a big new thing is also that we can lie down so go prone metal gear solid style and next to the regular tall grass there should now also be small grass or whatever they're gonna call it where you will only be hidden if you go prone and then move that way we talked about it before but hiding in the darkness is also a feature basically stealth should be more like splinter cell gadgets will be back like a kunai shuriken smoke bomb and a bell and these should be exclusive to the female character who should be called naoi the name can still change though while the male character we can also play as just like in syndicates they're both in the world he should be based on a real-life character, the African samurai Yasuke. This, by the way, an illustration, not what he will look like in the game. But this character will have different gadgets than the female lead. But Jonathan did not know these gadgets yet. There should be a posture system, similar to Ghost of Tsushima, with a posture bar that we will have to break. So probably more depth in the combat, and we have to read the enemies more. I like the sound of that. And there will, of course, be many camps that we can infiltrate, and these will have commanders, and we can choose to kill them to get their loot or spare them. And if we spare them, they become a spy, giving us info about new missions and potential equipment. So this sounds pretty cool, and is a nice use of the choices and in terms of graphics Jonathan said that we should not expect the same level as Star Wars Outlaws which of course made on the Snowdrop engine although it will be a noticeable jump from Valhalla and that makes sense because Red will be the first current gen only title of course. I think it's cool to hear these gameplay changes they were very needed Mirage really showed to me that we need new stealth options in Assassin's Creed and it seems like Red will do that and it seems also pretty focused on your skill instead of your RPG stats. I'm curious how they're gonna balance that because I'm sure stats and sort of perks and stuff will still be a thing. I'm curious to hear your take of course in the comments down below and I will keep you posted here if we got more info. Moving on to Warner Brothers games because well they are focused on transforming its biggest franchises into service games. And these franchises include Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, DC, which is mainly Batman today, and Mortal Kombat. And it's kind of a wild statement because if you look at their recent live service output, Multiverses, that is now gone and should be coming back at some point. We got Suicide Squad, of course, coming up. But because of the poor reception to the live service elements, that also got delayed by another year. And will also make a comeback likely at the game awards while i liked gotham knights you totally noticed that a lot changed during development they probably wanted to make this more an rpg live service game we also got like raid post-launch content which was kind of weird while on the other hand you have the non-live service titles like lego star wars that did really well and hogwarts legacy the best-selling game of the year generating 1 billion dollars in revenue in less than three months so instead 
instead of looking at that and thinking, whoa, let's make more of those single player games because they really work for us, they're like, okay, they make a ton of money, but they don't make a lot of money over time. We want more money. But this Warner Brothers CEO that is of course also focused on a lot of other entertainment areas does not seem to realize that maintaining a live service with quality content is way harder to pull off than putting out a single player game and that having a live service game could actually backfire meaning that you will get less money than with a single player game. Now don't get me wrong, a GTA Online type Hogwarts Legacy could actually be really cool and pretty successful exploring the school and surroundings together with a friend, dueling against other people online, playing Quidditch together. There's totally something here but Harry Potter is also about the narrative and that will then obviously take a back seat in a game like this. Still, I would imagine they can use a lot of the world they already created for Hogwarts Legacy and then try and spin it into an online thing. Of course, easier said than done, but it might not be a bad idea. Still though, it's not a good trend as we now can clearly see that Rocksteady was forced into making a game they probably did not want to make or at least did not have experience in making. And a ton of companies like EA have figured out that you should let Bioware do what they are known for, narrative focused RPGs. Let the single player team inside Respawn make a Jedi game while the multiplayer people make Apex. Warner does not seem to learn from that at all and wants to chase the infinite money that so many other companies have tried at and failed. So if Suicide Squad fails, Rocksteady is then going to make a Batman live service. And what about Wonder Woman? Is that a live service game as well? I still think more companies should do a single player focused live service game. It has been super successful for Assassin's Creed with the recent RPGs. Hoyoverse has shown that it can totally work. Lords of the Fallen has a big free content roadmap as well. Live service games should not always mean multiplayer only. I think it can be done, but looking at what Warner Brothers is doing, I don't think this is what they mean. And now that I need to prove the point that live service games are of course super hard to get right but we do have an update from Sony because they delayed six of its 12 live service games we talked about it last week how they wanted to launch 12 of these ongoing titles by their fiscal year ending March 2026 well now that's only six hard to like predict what the delayed titles are because they're probably not all announced apart from the Lost of multiplayer game I think that's a safe bet so what are the six games that they do plan to launch in the next two years I think Kong Court that is planned for 2024 is one of them. It's a sci fi shooter. Fair Games, maybe Hell Divers 2, I'm not sure if that's counted. And Bungie's Marathon is still in 2025. And I think the Horizon Online Project is also closer than we think. And then we have one other unspecified game. I'm sure the next PlayStation Showcase, it may be June 2024, will give us answers. But yeah, Sony only launched one big first party title with Spider Man this year. And in the next two years, they plan to launch at least six, and they will all be live service. Of course, we will get some single-player games like Wolverine as well. And speaking of Insomniac, we learned that Spider-Man 2 now sold 5 million units in 11 days, more than deserved. Once again, showing that single-player games are doing very well, but of course, we need the live service as well. And Sony is still on track to sell 25 million units in their current financial year, ending March 2024 with the PS5 now at 46.6 million units. And this coming week, they're gonna launch the PlayStation Portal that I'm weirdly enough kind of excited about. I don't think it will be worth the price. Like, it's of course only able to remote play games, but I'm the kind of person that likes to play games in a bathtub. And I don't mind looking at the tiny screen if it means that I can just sit a bit more relaxed. And then I can also still record my gameplay, which we mostly do from the PS5 anyways. So maybe I will have something to say about it next week in the Sunday video. Apart from that, the Assassin's Creed VR game is coming this week. We might do something with that. I'm sure there will be more Spider-Man stuff to go over and hopefully some other surprises. We at least got some fun video plans, so stay tuned for that. And of course, at the end of the week, I will have another big gaming news roundup like this. Check out Omni Heroes via the link in the pinned comments. That would really support the channel as well. A like would help me out and subscribe to not miss our future content. Check out last week's roundup with God of War. DLC rumors and way way more by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye